Devlin. Unbelievable. Incredible. <laughs> the platform. Jamie, just uh, talking there to Andy Buckley as well. The parallels between Sir Gareth Southgate and what what might have been Sir Ian Foster. <laughs> No. Nah. Come on. If Come you'd, on. we'd won the World Cup, he would have got a knighthood, man. You know that. Come on. Um, yeah, but I, didn't people originally like Southgate and then they went off him and now they're back? That never happened with Foster. Though. Actually, yeah, that's a good point. Actually, But, I mean, just on that, though, I mean, are you happy for England, England fans or what? Yeah. Yeah, no, I am. I am. I'm, I, I like this team. Uh, they seem like a good bunch of, not just a good bunch of players, but a good bunch of guys and and obviously, it's a team that if you if you have a kind of guess, I guess, casual interest in football, that these are, this is the team you know the most about. Yeah, so, yeah of course, yeah. Uh, so you know, it's a team that I, I follow at, at most tournaments, and and yeah, I'm just uh, it was an exciting game. Um, and but I just I, I I have loved 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 the way that this is the most um, English way of of going about a tournament. They're finally, you know, with the best chance to build potentially the best chance. To win a tournament in sixty years, and they've and they've spent most of the time complaining about it. Yeah, case. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. As I said, they were throwing things at him only three games ago, Jamie. You know, and this yeah. is this is yeah, the parallel absolutely. I draw with Ian Foster. You know, like if Foster had won the World Cup, he'd come home and people would love it, and everyone forgets about that side of it. I'm also, I just, I just on that. Do you, do you, I just get the impression, and maybe it's because you know we we have the colonial link to England and that, but they just seem to be so much fun when they win. Feels like it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I have to, I have to say, like, hard disagree on the Foster comparison, though. I don't think it would have mattered if he won the World Cup. I, don't, I really don't. I, that, I, that, that was the mood of the nation for for me. Um, and that's nothing against the guy. I just think it was just because. And again, I've said this probably about half a dozen times to you. It's not about who he was or how he took, coached a team or even really the results. It was a sense of unfairness about how he got the job. That that's the. That's I wonder the whether though, just on that, there was a sense of real unfairness about the way he was treated as well. I mean, we can debate this, and we will over a couple of jokes because I do owe you that. Let's talk about that team that was named today, mate. <laughs> uh, and no great surprise at all. And I'm glad, Jamie, there is no surprise. Christie starts, which means he plays for about 55 minutes. Cortez comes off the bench. Congratulations to that young man. Did was 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 he present at the press conference? Did you get to see him? Uh, Finlay was, yes. Okay. Um, I, I wasn't surprised that Cortez wasn't. They don't usually put debutants up for media until after the game. Okay. Uh, so, but Finlay, Finlay was. Uh, we also had Terrell Lomax and, of course, uh, Scott Robertson uh, giving his thoughts on the team. And, yeah, it was very much a case of, well, you know, we're into kind of phase two of, of what we're trying to do. We learned a lot from last week and how we're going to implement it and a bit of an admission that maybe they went into last week just trying to do a bit too much in in that first half but well, the pleasing thing for me looking back on it was that well yeah they did try and do too much in that first half and England kind of figured them out but they went and had a talk at half time and came out and played a completely different way and I don't think that's something that a team over the last four years perhaps even eight years an All Black team would have actually done because they would have been more confident in their own baked in abilities than rather than actually accepting the fact that hey these guys are pretty good and they've they're shutting us down they're shutting down everything we're trying to do outside of like first five uh, and so we're going to kick kick the ball as much as we possibly can they kicked the, I think the All Blacks kicked the ball twenty three times uh, in the second half um, if it wasn't a box kick it was a low flat rugby league style kick. Uh, that's trying to find land instead of hand, uh, which for the most part worked really well, uh, I have to say. I, I think other, up until, you know, McKenzie's blooper at the end, the All Blacks had managed the last uh, 10 minutes or so of that game perfectly uh, in terms of keeping England in their, stuck in their half, um, forcing them to play out. Um, they clearly had a few deficiencies and and how they how far out they could attack. Don't get me wrong, they scored a really nice try in the second half, but that was off a really poor, that started off a really poor read uh, of the All Black um, defence. So as long as they just defended right, I have to say I was quite impressed with Christie's performance when he came on um, because he he played his role perfectly, which was to um, you know he was a bit shaky at the start. But by the end, his tactical kicking, um, when he was putting it down there and putting Furbank under some real pressure, uh, worked really well. So I liked the fact that they were able to switch it up there and ask Scott Robertson, you know, like, is, is that 
what we're going to see out of this this All Black team going forward, that you've got these kind of cards up your sleeve that you can just pull out and become a completely different team. Um, yeah, it's cool winning, Jamie. I mean, that's what, that's yeah. what Test Match Rugby is yeah. about. It's about and winning. Th- it's only sport with Martin Devlin, untamed, only on the platform. It's just gone 18 uh, too. We've got a few minutes with our good man, Jeff Parks, uh, from the Raw out of uh, Melbourne, um, before we get on to the Wallaby side. And also that great article that you put out after the first test, Jeff, where you described it as green shoots. Green shoots. See, I've got a veggie pod, and so I, they're just connected with me straight away. But first and foremost, you emceed and hosted Joe Schmidt and Warren Gatlin. Good on you, mate. How, how, how cool was that? Uh, yeah, we had a big night last night at the MCG. It's been a rough uh, year for uh, Melbourne rugby, uh, obviously, Marty. But uh, last night was a good chance to make up a bit of ground with the Test match here on Saturday, and and we had a big dinner and uh, lots of Welsh people there and a, a big Welsh choir. And we had the two coaches come along, and they were great value to the crowd. So. Um, yeah, they both had uh, a lot to say, a lot of insights about the game uh, and also talking about the current series. So um, terrific value for the punters. And uh, look, I can share with you maybe a couple of things on, where, on, they, uh, where, where they uh, agreed. And, yep. we, we, and this is a subject uh, near to your heart. We got talking about TMOs and, uh, and their involvement in rugby. And last Saturday, we saw uh, Wales had a try rubbed out on a TMO call after it was awarded. Later that night, we saw uh, Ireland uh, get stiffed uh, about three times by the TMO. Um, And then Joe, uh, during the week, Joe Smith talked about uh, the World Cup final where he was obviously involved with the All Blacks and there was a TMO involvement there where... Uh, a try to the All Blacks. Just a minor one, back. Jeff. I was sitting next yeah, to you, mate. Just, just a minor one. <laughs> just a little one. <laughs> yeah. And uh, which we which we took in our stride. Yes, uh, we did. Uh, yeah, well, not really. No, but know. anyway, um, you know, so, and that was outside the protocols. And uh, so the TMOs have become a little bit of a law to themselves. We've got this two referees by stealth almost. And, and uh, we're in this sort of, fruitless search for perfection and uh, and there's a price to pay for that and of course we don't always get the perfect answer anyway so it was interesting to hear uh, Gatland and Smith talk about that um, and look they're like anybody else you know when it, the decision comes in your favour it's not so bad right you live with it and you move on and you might win a test match but but when it's not in your favour it's no fun at all and that was the point Joe yeah, was making yeah. about the World Cup final um, and, and just in terms of, you know, what, what does that mean for the game, slowing it all up? It turns fans off. It, it leaves a bit of taste in people's mouths. So I think, you know, if the coaches can get together and put a bit of pressure on uh, world rugby, and hopefully, you know, there is a movement amongst some people to for more TMO involvement, more perfection. And, and I think though the real rugby people and the real fans just want to see them butt out and and let's judge try or no try. And if there's a piece of foul play off the ball that people miss, well, that's fair enough. Let's do that as well. But this going back five phases for a knock-on or something like that, yeah, it, it really has to end. It really, really has to end. And, and so it was really heartening to hear uh, both the coaches uh, supportive of that view last night.